everyone, I'm Chester44 and welcome to this Let's Play of Queen's Wish, The Conqueror! Last episode, we moved back over to the Yukat territories and made our way through Ganelspan. Now that we're up here, well, the Ganel clan still hate us and don't want us through their fort, we just happen to find a way around. We have an invitation to go to Chind, the city of the Yukat here, and we also have our fort over here, and I am definitely going over to the fort first. You get your first good look at the northern Ukat. It is very different from the south. Far safer, for a start. Even though it's farther north, it's warmer. There's less mist, no signs of haunting. It's still muddy and miserable, but the earth is more fertile. To the north, you see a large town, surrounded by farmlands. You are closer to the true Ukatish centers of power and wealth. You aren't in the provinces anymore. If you are to make the Ukatish your vassals, this is where the battle will be fought. Indeed. First things first. Ganel Estate West, Ganel Span to the East. Oh, is this actually the town? Literally right here. You know what? Screw it. You are near a large outpost where the fine Ukatish iron ore is forged. Heavy clouds of smoke billow into the sky. It makes your eyes water. You notice huge tracks in the mud. Some massive hoofed beasts have been hunting the area. You squint into the mist, looking for signs of them. Ashen Foundry, that is... Not what we're going to go to. That's something else. Also, we have some creatures hunting us. Five mire boars! Oh, this is gonna be a bit rough. Yeah, we're in a tougher area now. These mire boars are moving to surround us. And, of course, because they take up four spaces, we can't stop them from moving anywhere. I hate this! Ow, and ow, and ow. Uh, throw some poison on him. That should get him all. And it did. Good. Uh, of course, they're all moving around to try and get to Patricia. And Terrence. God damn it. You see what I hate about this? Just get that one dead, at least. I didn't want you to go that far! There's another one dead. Get this one dead. That's another one dead. Now I can focus on this one. Back up. Thank you. One more to kill. And there we go. Alright. Now the fort should be over here? No. Should be up here? Here it is. You approach the ruins of a Havenite fort. It must be Fort Darkfen. There are soldiers and workers by the east gate. When you get close, you are surprised and relieved to see that they are Havenites, too. General Ajax was able to slip a considerable force into Ukatish lands, along with tools and supplies. You can give the order to rebuild this fort now. You approach the camp, isolated in the deep reaches of the Ukat. There are a bunch of Haven soldiers huddled together outside a ruined fort, enduring the unpleasant climate. One rises, approaches you, and kneels. I am Chief Torvik. We were sent from the West Battalion to reclaim Fort Darkfin. We just need the order. His voice is calm and bland, as if he hasn't noticed that he is dripping wet and freezing cold. How did you get here? General Ajax gave us the order. After the ships dropped the battalions off here, they stayed around. The general used them to sneak us back here. Have any problems? He gives a little shrug. Their Ganel clan to the south doesn't like us. 
They are fairly violent. They have not been a concern. His casual, unruffled air is remarkable. I give the order. Get to work. Torvik turns and says, in a calm, quiet voice, It is time to begin work. The bedraggled soldiers and, and craftsfolk give a hearty cheer. Then they pour into the ruins of, of Fort Darkfen. You can now collect resources from mines you control in this region. When you rebuild two forts in a country, the theft chance goes up 20%. Alright. I'm just going to take a look around the fort before we actually go in. A cache of stone has been left out here by the docks. The chief has neglected to have it carried into your fort. You made a note to make sure this is done. And... You find a few crates of supplies left by Haven's ships. Among the mundane equipment, you find a flask of quicksilver. You take it. Okay, some extra resources are good. Now, let us go in. Fort Darkfen. Of course, first things first, we're going to look around to see what we've got around here. Okay, we've got a uh, outpost there. There's all the people walking around, all our soldiers and the like. Okay, we've got a building there, we've got a building here. And we've got a building here. Alright, this goes upstairs, I imagine. Yep, another guard tower. You can see the main building right there. There we go. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, as expected. Okay then. And what are our resources coming in now? Four wood, one stone, four iron. Oh, that is beautiful. And you know what? I'm pretty sure we have so many resources, we can upgrade the fort. Do it! Excellent. Now what are we getting? Six wood, one stone, six iron. That is beautiful. What's our theft chance here? It doesn't say. Okay, I love this, and we are definitely going to use this iron for what we need. Including another smithy. We're getting a lot of resources here. I love it. All right. Chief Torvik. This large hall is meant to be a major center of trade and political dealings with the Ukatish. All it is waiting for is the actual people. There is one Havenite official here now setting everything up. He is the sort of bland, empty-faced bureaucrat you came to hate back in the palace. Muted, officious, and quietly judgmental. Greetings, Prince Rupert. I am Chief Torvik. I hope your journey here was pleasant. I am ready to give a report. I await your report. He checks his notes. General Ajax had difficulty getting materials through Ganelspan, so we were dropped off here by ship. Our fort is now established. <coughs> when the Yucatish are our vassals again, we'll, we will be ready to immediately begin profitable trade with them. How have the Yucatish treated you? We were afraid that we would be massacred by the locals, but the Brock clan has welcomed us. Their projection saved our warriors from a lot of unpleasant exercise. What can you do for me? I know about the political situation. My knowledge might help you to return the Ukatish to vassalhood. We also need more supplies. I think I know where they might be obtained. Thank you for the report. He nods. It was my pleasure. More polite words, but this bureaucrat is surely judging you like everyone else. Is there anything else you need? I have learned quite a lot. How did you come to be here? When it was known that a full prince would, full, would pacify Sacramentum, I was one of the chiefs personally selected to run your forts. It was a great honor. He shows no sign of pride or pleasure when he says this. What was your early service like? He rattles off a list of highlights. Chief Torvik has been blandly competent all over the known world, often in the face of constant warfare. Who selected you? I was chosen and personally briefed by Prince Sutter. Again, a great honor. Not that you could tell from his expression. He told me that I had a good temperament for this mission because of the special nature of the Ukatish. What special nature? The Ukatish are always quick to take offense. They can be very rude and they hold grudges for a long time. 
Some vassals require contact with officials who are very calm. You will find that I am difficult to rise to anger. What do you think of the Yucatish? They are consumed by hatred of outsiders, of themselves. It seems like a part of their nature. Nonetheless, they are hard workers and they keep bargains, so they can still be valuable a vassals. I'd like to discuss the Yucatish. Of course, a difficult and unusual people with a complicated attitude that can make them hard to deal with. They are a clan-based society, and the strongest clan rises to the throne and makes all decisions. You will need to make sure that the clan who holds their home warren is willing to obey their treaty with us. Tell me about their attitude. This is a hard environment, and it has made hard people. The mud and disease makes everyone look down on the Yucatish, including the Yucatish. It makes them prickly and resentful. For more, I would speak to Jared. He is upstairs. He has spent some time studying this unusual vassal. Tell me about their clans. There are many of them. They constantly divide, combine, and fight. Most are small and insignificant. There are four of importance in their politics now. The Ake, the Ganel, the Brock, and the Borgen. What of the Ake? You may have met them already. They control much of the southern Ukat. They are mainly traders. They have few warriors and no interest in claiming the crown. For now, anyway. What of the Ganel? They are a powerful and dangerous clan. Much of their wealth comes from controlling the Ganel span. I believe they attacked you there. They hate Haven and are only interested in driving us out. What of the Brock? They control most of the lands around us. They are a strong, ambitious clan despite the Borgen and the Ganel raiding them. They are based in Chind to the east. It might be worthwhile to meet their leaders. What of the Borgen? The Borgen hold the home warren and the crown. Their leader is King Borgen the 53rd. All I know about him is that he is old. He seems to want peace with us. At least he has not bothered our merchants and envoy. You can find him in the home war and far to the east. Meeting him would probably be interesting at the least. All right. So those are the four groups. We're definitely not going to he help the Ganel. We're probably going to end up having to kill them. The Ake are very friendly. They are very willing, but I don't think they'd be able to do much to control the rest. So it's probably going to be between the Borgen and the Brock. Let's dis... Chief Torvik stands politely off to the side. Please, Prince, if you need help, just ask. I am here to aid you. He's so friendly and pleasant on the outside, but you can sense the judgment underneath. Let's discuss this fort. We are well established. Our defenses are strong. The Ukatish warriors are not skilled at attacking fortifications. We are under no danger now. We could use more resources, but that is always true. We are preparing for politics and trade. When the Ukatish are our vassals again, this fort will provide great value to Haven. Is there anything I can do to get more resources? In fact, there is a good opportunity in front of us. There is a swamp with good bog iron to the north. It is called Merkala, and it is ours. Unfortunately, my scouts say it is infested with monsters. We don't have enough soldiers to march north and retake it, but you should be able to do this easily. We own Merkala? We purchased it with good gold before Queen Sharon withdrew Haven from Sacramentum. They never paid us to regain it. Therefore, it is ours. Why do we want Mercala back? Such swamps generate a good, constant, profitable flow of bog iron. The iron of the Ukat is their great wealth. If we had it, you would receive more iron to use to rebuild your forts. Where is Mercala? It is north in a particularly cold, murky, and unpleasant stretch of swamp. And that's probably where we're going to find the person we're looking for to get more information on the calamity. The shaman. Alright, let's look in here. Haven soldier there. There's probably a sage up here. Yep, sage Jared. Let's see. A tale of the Ukat swamps is told to sage Jared of Haven. Once, in the days before the ache rose, a band of Ariel Blessed entered the southern Ukat. They were hunting our kind, as they did. They saw us as just more mirelings, not proper folk. This was in the days when we were mastering ironcraft. Our hooked spears were new to the south, new to the Ariel. Our warriors hid in the slime, and they hooked the ankles of the Ariel as they rushed past. They fell and hobbled into the swamp, slow and hurt. We kept them out there, and they rotted. This was how the Ariel learned to not hunt us. They still see us as mirelings, though. A tale of the Ukat swamps is told to sage Jared. 
This was in my grandfather's time, after the Vol had stopped enslaving us, and had instead turned on their own. Merchants of the Brock were si were, went there to buy their stone. They were to build a mighty fortress. The Vol told them of ways to keep the stone from sinking into the mire, but they were all lies. The Vol never treat us honest. We brought the stone, the fort sank, and all the Brock efforts came to ruin. Always remember, this is the life of the Ukatish. The entire world is ringed around us, looking in, pointing at us, and laughing. Hmm. Okay, and this room here... Oh, a chest! With nothing. Probably meant to be our personal quarters. Alright, Sage Jared. The Sage of Fort Darkfen is all professionalism. She is stocking the shelves with blank scrolls, empty ledgers, and unused quill pens. She is ready for business, and a lot of it. She curtsies deeply when you approach. Welcome to Fort Darkfin, Prince. I am Sage Jared, record keeper. I'm just a scribe, alas, and I also study the Yucatish a bit. There is little I can do for you, but I will do what I can. What records do you keep? We plan to send lots of shipments of goods in and out of Sacramentum. We're going to make a lot of people rich, collect a lot of taxes, deal with lots of petty clan leaders. Each transaction, each payment, requires a piece of paper. I also keep some of the battalion history. You expect a lot of paperwork. Piles, heaps, tons, mountains! We will build another wing of this fort out of it. The battalion's history. The West Battalion has another name. It is the 5th Army, 6th Battalion. We have a proud history. We have served and lost member warriors in dozens of vassal states, and we remember all of it. Sage Jared shows you around her library and record hall. There are tons of ledgers and scrolls, as well as books containing the history of the battalion. This might be the cleanest room in all of the Yukat. You study the Yukatish. Of course. There is, it is no struggle. They are a fascinating people. This is a hard, dirty land. Cold, disease. Many of them die young. They are consumed by grudges. The fire of their anger keeps them warm. Where do these grudges come from? Olden days, of course. Vassals often have long memories. Children here, if they survive infancy, suckle on endless stories of how, about how cruel the Yucatish were treated. How did the Vol and Ariel treat them? Once, the Vol would capture Ukatish and enslave them in quarries. The Ariel? Well, they're arrogant. They mocked the Ukatish, And, stories tell, sometimes hunted them for sport. All this happened centuries ago. We will never know which stories are true and which false. I've collected some of them in my books. How are the Yucatish treated now? At some point, the Yucatish became able to make vicious and excellent iron weaponry. They mastered techniques for fighting in the swamps. Raids, tricks, traps, and ambushes. The Vol and Ariel have not hunted the Yucatish for many, many years. Do you have any advice for me? The Yucatish will always hate us. However, if we are cordial, they will make deals with us and keep their end of them. Just don't insult them. If you do, they will never, ever forget. Be polite, even if you have to bite your lip until it bleeds. I have every intent to. How did you learn? How do you learn about them, by the way? I talk to them. It is the best way. They are always willing to tell stories about how put upon they are. Talk to people in their towns. Be polite, and you will learn a lot. Is there anything I can do to help? She thinks about this. I hesitate to ask, but there is a place called Fort Bannerspire. If you ever have reason to be there, there is something I would love to learn. What is Fort Bannerspire? An old ruin to the northeast. It's a massive structure of vol stone sinking into the mire on the north coast. The Yucatish were really proud of it once. They used it to train warriors and impress visitors. It was built about 40 years ago, abandoned about 30. What do you want me to learn? I guess... what happened? Why did they build it? Why did it crumble into ruin? Why was it abandoned? See if they have any records there. I think if I knew, it would tell me a lot about the Yucatish. Will do. Another place we can investigate. But we don't actually have it there, so we'll find it eventually. And here we have... Ooh! The trading hall of Fort Darkfen is mostly empty. It's waiting and hoping for a long procession of merchants and miners. The head trader of Fort Darkfen approaches. Greetings, Prince. I am Dagfin. Chief Torvik told me to help you if you came by. I can aid you in managing Haven's resources. Tell me about yourself. 
I am the quartermaster of Fort Darkfen. Oh, you wanted more? Uh, Chief Torvik asked us to not engage in excess storytelling or sentimentality. I could use rest and supplies. Of course, we set up a bedroom for you upstairs. As for equipment, we have nothing better than what you already have. I want to exchange resources. I can relieve you of any excess materials you have. You can get gold for your... Okay. Oh, I can also use my contacts to trade woodstone and quicksilver for good Ukatish iron. Oh. Oh, that's interesting. You can exchange resources from the other nations here. You can get rid of anything you have more than ten of. Oh, that's interesting. So we can do the selling here. So stone and quicksilver we can sell here. Sure. But if we need more iron, we can use up the resources we have in the other areas in order to get stuff. I'd like to sell something. Okay, we can sell things here. I just realized I still have that egg. Actually, no, I'm keeping that. Okay. Very interesting. All right. And now that we have all these resources... 14 visions. We have so much steel now. We're going to be using this. We need to build some things. I want another smithy. Definitely. Uh, anything else? What are we making in... We're only making two of those. So I'm not going to get another apothecary now. How much are we getting in wood? We are getting a ton. So I think we can get... A weaving room and a carpenter easily. I'm fine with that. Uh, we'll put the barracks there. I think the three buildings can go down here. I'm fine with that. Build one there, build one there, and build one here. You know what? I'm going to put the, uh, Hold on, I also realize we need three shop banners. In this building, I will put the smithy. Okay. Uh, what can we buy now, weapon-wise? No weapon up improvements. Armor-wise? No armor improvements. Helmet-wise? We can get steel plate helm, which is better than what we have. I like that idea. Same with you. Also get a steel plate helm. You have a bronze salad. You can get an iron salad, though. Which is actually not a bad idea, I think. Okay. Uh, arcane weapons, we're not getting anything. So, done shopping. We need to swap out. You don't have any augmentations in your helm. You don't have any augmentations in your helm. You, however, do. Okay, and I want to sell this helmet this helmet, and this helmet. Okay, excellent. We are going to put the shop banner right there. That's actually the right one. All right, we'll put the... Mm, we'll put the weaving room in here. All right, weaver, what can you get? New robe. We've already, we're already good on that, so there's nothing special. We've already got two magical damage. Sorcerer's Vestment, that's what I'd really love to have. What about Cowl? You can actually get a Spider Silk Cowl, which is actually much better. Definitely going to get that. A bigger backpack, we'll need to get another Weaver in order to do that. Oh, almost forgot. Shop Banner. Weaver. And this one will be the carpenter. Carpenter here. Let me see your wares. Bows! K 
Can we improve our bows at all? You've already got an Ash Longbow. We don't... We can't get a better one. Shields! Ooh. We're currently on a Steel Buckler. Six and three. Eight and four. That is a s speed penalty, but it is better. I'm tempted to take it. Uh, maybe not. We've used up a lot of coin already. You, nothing. You already have a steel buckler. You're fine. You're getting nothing. Wands! Currently you're using a U wand. Wand of Bone is actually much better. It causes slowness instead of weakness, but I'm fine with that. So, yeah, let's do that. Okay. And we have to do something about these, uh, augments that you have. Oh, this is gonna be awkward. You know what? Hold on. Just throw that in you for a moment. Nope, not sell something. I want to install. You are taking that out. And putting it in. You are taking that out. And putting it in. Okay. I want to sell these two items. And that is all. Oh, wait. I also need to move this back over to you. We're good. Go out here. Oh, I need to actually... No, that is correct. It's the one over here I need to put down. Right there. Okay. And we still have so much wood that I think we can buy one more thing. Well, we're getting a lot of wood. We can actually put a barracks in here. Wait, what is our stone up? Stone up keeps fine. You know what? Put a barracks in. We're low on wood. So I think after we install this barracks, we're going to stop. Oh, yes. Also, uh, one of these. Alright, put in the barracks. How are things going in this region? You learn that the area is reasonably secure. Robberies of your supplies will be rare. Okay. Put down the banner. And there we go. Okay. Now, two things we need to do before I end this episode. First off, we need to report in in the mire fangs that we've done what was requested of us. To Ewan Barnett. Fort Darkfin is being rebuilt. Then we can tell the Queen that the lost forts of the Ukatish have been rebuilt. It is a great thing. It's a major part of our order, so we all get paid a bonus. Don't I get a bonus? Um, aren't you a prince? Why do you need a reward? Seems like Ewan is calming down a little, at least. Yeah, I suppose I'm not surprised there. Okay. Now, the other thing I need to do, see if there's any news out of Fort Haven itself. Alright, Stonehouse, any messages? Yes, the portal is active. Let's go speak. You hear the voice of Queen Sharon. She says, in her momentous voice, Prince Rupert, I have come to commend you. You have rebuilt half of our lost forts on Sacramentum. You have pleased us. Well done. Thank you, Mother. Of course, my praise was well earned. Delio is right to urge me to trust you. Anything else? One small thing. You have always been ambivalent about the work of our family and of Haven. Now you are working to restore our control of Sacramentum. Do you have any... any qualms, I suppose? Ah, uh, so many of the people in these lands don't want us here, there. Yes, but we make sure that more people do want us, or are indifferent. As long as you make sure many people want us there, our presence is justified. Who is to say, after all, if one side deserves their way more than the other? I have another question. Of course, I... 
I... And then the portal is silent. You wait. There is no response. That was very odd. Alright, need some information. Are we making progress? Good progress. Through some careful trading, I s obtained suitably soft sheets for the bed upstairs. Bird bugs, alas, continue to be an issue. Does my mother think? No change. People of Sacramentum, no change. How am I progressing? You have made great progress. Continue meeting with the leaders of Sacramentum. Give some of them what they want in return for their submission to us. Be ready, however, if we become too powerful, the curse that harmed our colony that before may return. That is all. And if I may, uh, I've had a hard journey. I need a refreshing... Actually, my armor and weapons must be polished. Yes, butchering rebels and malcontents does tend to scuff the patina. It will be done. Thank you. That's all I need. Okay. And with that, I am going to end this episode here. I believe it's gone on long enough. Next episode, I believe where we will go is to Chind itself. We need to actually learn a bit about what's going on there. But that'll be in the next episode. So until then, I'm Chester44, that is Rupert, Elspeth, Terence, and Patricia. This has been a Let's Play of Queen's Wish the Conqueror. And I shall see you all next time.